Well, hello, friends. It's Russ Barkley back again after about a two and a half week hiatus. Thank you for your patience. As you know, Gabrielle and I were moving during 10 of those days from one house to another. We have since relocated, as you can see from the background. This will be my new studio for a little while longer until I get the uh, permanent one set up. Uh, and then following the move, no sooner did we get unpacked and get our artwork hung up and everything, and I came down with the flu. Still have a little bit of that congestion left, but what's new? So, uh, so thank you again for your patience. Today I want to talk about an article that appeared in my news feed in the popular media. And in the media, it was claimed that digital media use seemed to increase the risk for ADHD in adolescents and adults. So I went and took a look at the actual study on which this trade article was based. And of course, the article sort of sensationalizes and kind of misrepresents the content of this article, but it's still an interesting article. So let's take a look at it to see whether or not digital media use is related to ADHD. Now, we've known for a long time, ever since Christakis and others in developmental pediatrics and child psychiatry reported that those who watch more television, particularly in the preschool years, were more prone to have symptoms of inattention and ADHD later on. There were a lot of problems with those studies, one of which is that they couldn't necessarily be replicated, even using the same data sets, but somewhat different, more appropriate analyses. The other thing is it didn't control for the fact that people prone to ADHD gravitate toward screens more than other people do, whether it's television, computers, their cell phones, social media, what have you. So, you know, you have to separate what's the chicken and the egg here. And so um, what it eventually turned out to show in that body of research is that people with ADHD were more prone to be watching television excessively and using more screen time. It wasn't necessarily the other way around. Uh, however, it still remains an interesting question given the ubiquitousness now of all of the different kinds of screens, all of the different kinds of digital media, whether or not there is this association. An association, by the way, that the trade article was interpreting as causal. That is, screen time was causing later ADHD. So we're going to do a little bit deeper dive for a few minutes into this article because that's not quite what it shows. This is a study published over at the Journal of the American Medical Association on their network. And the link is always found in the description for those of you not familiar with my coverage of research. And this study took place in Los Angeles and it surveyed thousands of high school students that eventually settled down to a population of a little over 3,000 uh, that it surveyed. And it was interested in looking at individuals who reported no symptoms of ADHD at time one, and then were, they were followed up for a period of up to 24 months. This is between 10th grade and 12th grade. And during that time, they filled out surveys about their use of digital media and also self-reported on their ADHD symptoms. So let's be clear, it's a good study because the sample is large and they're collecting appropriate information about both ADHD and social media. On the other hand, the study is problematic because it is based on self-report. And we know that individuals in their adolescent years, in childhood as well, but all the way up to about age 30, we know that people who are prone to ADHD are likely to under-report the severity of their symptoms. Indeed, we find that even typical teenagers often underreport the occurrence of these symptoms. So, so number one, we have to raise a red flag here about the use of self-reports by teenagers. But let's, let's put that aside for a moment and continue on here. The second thing is that none of these individuals had clinical ADHD. In fact, none of them had ADHD at all. What's being tracked here is how many of the 18 ADHD symptoms did they report at any particular time. And of course, at baseline, they only took people who reported no symptoms, and then they followed them up over time. So keep in mind, this is not about ADHD, the clinical disorder. It's about ADHD symptoms 
in the general population of teenagers. So during the follow-up period, they looked at how often they used media, what kind of media they used, how many different sources of media and screens they were using. And what they found, what they report in their results, is that there was a small but significant association between the amount of screen time, that is the amount of digital media use, the number of different forms of digital media that were used, and particularly social media, was related to a small increase in risk of having some ADHD symptoms two years later. That's all it found. What was the risk? 10%. So if you use all this media, the extent to which you're using it might create an increase of about 10% in the likelihood you're going to report at least one or more symptoms at follow-up. So here's what they found. About 4.6% of the individuals who were reported not using media very frequently reported having one or more ADHD symptoms. That figure goes from 4.6% up to about 9.5% for the small number of individuals who were using social media at a very high frequency, what they reported at least seven different high frequency use activities. So about a doubling from 4.6 to 9.5%. But look at those numbers. They're very small. In other words, 90% of the teens in this study showed no increase in ADHD symptoms over that two-year period, regardless of the amount of screen time that they were using. But a small percentage did show such an increase. Does that show causation? We don't know, because there's no effort to manipulate exposure to media here as we would in a treatment kind or experimental design. The second thing, as I said, this is based on self-report by teens, which can be unreliable and quite variable over time. The third, as I just pointed out, is that the increase was a risk of about 10%. Pretty negligible. From the standpoint of a clinician, really not worth much saying at all. So again, we're not studying ADHD here, the disorder. We're really looking at frequency of ADHD symptoms self-reported by teens over two years based on screen time. And the amount of digital media use did seem to be associated with, not necessarily causal, associated with a very slight increase in having one or more ADHD symptoms later. Um, you know, I'm not surprised. I mean, inattention is ubiquitous across all psychological, psychiatric disorders. It is common in the population, which is why if you occasionally have inattention, it doesn't mean that you have ADHD at all. And that could be what's going on here. It could be causal, I'm not saying it's not, but this study does not demonstrate a causal relationship. So once again, we see that the trade media has somewhat misrepresented both the details and the conclusions one can draw from the study reported in JAMA. Uh, we don't see a causal relationship here. And by the way, the trade media talked about this causing ADHD in adults as well. There were no adults in this particular study. So, so there you have it. We should continue to study this association of digital media use with increases in inattention or other symptoms of ADHD. But at this point, we're not seeing that screen time or digital media use is causing clinical ADHD in the population. So let's get real here. Let's keep it real. It's an interesting finding, but a lot more research has to be done. So I hope you enjoyed the review of this article. I'll be back this Saturday with our usual Saturday morning research update along with, of course, my usual bad dad jokes. But thanks for being patient. I'm glad to be back. I hope you're glad to have me back and I'll be posting more videos as the week goes on. So thanks everybody, appreciate it, be well.